Hi everyone. Well, it's now galaxy season and there's a reason why we call it galaxy season, but there's so many out there, I don't know which one to choose. However, I'm going to show you a way where I can do it while I'm asleep and get more targets than just one, two, three, even four targets in a single night. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. It is now early April and there are just so many targets to choose from up in the sky. In the western sky we still have Orion and the Rosette Nebula, the Horsehead Nebula, the Crab Nebula all in the western skies uh, throughout the month of April. But in the eastern sky we have much more coming up, many galaxies. It is a plethora. <laughs> There are many galaxies out in the eastern sky, particularly in Leo and Virgo and Coma Berenice and other constellations up in the eastern sky, Ursa Major up in the northeastern and north, northern sky. But recently I moved my telescope into the position where I can get a better view of the eastern and northeastern sky. Uh, this is the Orion uh, Eon triplet 130 millimeter telescope. It's been doing a fantastic job so far. I put it on the AVX mount, the advanced VX mount, and sure enough, it does work. I was afraid that it might be a little bit too heavy to be supported on this mount, but with the proper balance, uh, it's working like a champ right now. The tracking has been very good throughout the uh, nighttime hours. All right, here you have a sky map, and this is the western sky in early April. Here you have Orion the Hunter with the Orion Nebula, the Horsehead Nebula right around the belt. Uh, you have the Rosette Nebula just to the north, the Crab Nebula, M1. And then farther to the north, you do have M82 and M81. That's Bode's Nebula and the Cigar Nebula. But further toward the east, you have this plethora of galaxies over here in Leo and Virgo. Off to the north in the uh, uh, Big Dipper or Urza, Ursa Major, the Big Bear. And uh, yeah, there's M101, which is, was one of my targets from last night. Earlier, I shot the Sunflower Galaxy. There's just so many other galaxies. You got the triplet of uh, in Leo, the uh, uh, so many other galaxies. Markarian's Chain is over here with a, just a, a ton of different galaxies uh, to be viewed. But all these different targets here, which one do they choose? Which one do I choose? There's the Black Eye Galaxy. There's another one uh, that's available uh, this time of the year and uh, will be for the next couple of months. So let's take a look at Nina. All right, so opening up Nina, uh, here I have it all set up, ready to go for four different targets throughout the nighttime hours. So let me show you, first of all, let's, let's just try something first. Uh, setting, setting up, let's take, for example, um, the Sombrero Galaxy, M104. There, type that in, hit search, and um, it'll be high in the south at about 1.30 in the morning. So, uh, taking a full view, there it is right there in the view uh, on my system. And then from there, I could uh, add target to sequence. So that's all I have to do right there is add target to sequence and that will add it to the uh, simple sequence. You can go into the advanced sequencer. This, by the way, is Nina uh, 1.11 nightly build, uh, number 053. Uh, this is going to be the new Nina, and it is really, really nice. So uh, it's in the beta version now, but soon to be part of the uh, uh, public release. But anyway, uh, the advanced sequence uh, sequencer is just loaded with all other options. But I'll, I'll stick with the simple sequences because that's that's really good too. And there you can set it up, uh, start guiding uh, when you uh, start the program. Uh, slew to the target, of course you want to do that, and then center the target, that's always a good idea. Uh, I don't have a rotator, so that that's, doesn't count. Um, autofocus on the start, and then I'm going to autofocus after so many exposures here, since uh, uh, let's do every uh, 20 exposures. And I'm going to set this up to do, uh, let's see, time, I'm going to go 180 seconds, so 180, and then from there I'm going to do uh, uh, three hours worth, so 60, and uh, right there, and the um, I'm going to keep the binning at one by one. I'm going to dither every every third frame, 
So I'll write there, one, two, three. And my gain is at 450. And the offset, uh, I had that set at 40. I think I did better at 20. I'm going to put that at 20. So there it goes. It's ready to go. And all you have to do when everything is ready is hit start. Now, if you don't want to use this particular uh, um, sequence of sequences, uh, you can move them around. Say, for example, you want it to do the sombrero before the needle galaxy. Well, you just click on that and move these the little arrow here. will push it over one. There it goes. Now it's in second place. And then the needle galaxy will be uh, done after that. And then M101 uh, will be done after that. And that's the new sequence. If you don't like the sequence, you can just uh, delete it. There it goes. It's gone. So uh, there you have it. Uh, Nina uh, doing its job. Let's take a look uh, during the night. See how Nina actually works. around the Crab Nebula. So let's go to our next, uh, to another uh, area. Let's show you how this works. Um, we'll set up a sequence right now. And I'm going to add a new target. And what I want to do is go into the Sky Atlas. And let's type in, oh, let's see, M51 for this example here. Search. There it is, right there. Now, everything should be on. Now, down here, cool camera when it starts, um, auto meridian flip. That's nice because if it gets to the meridian, it'll automatically flip the uh, telescope. Unpark the uh, scope uh, when sequence starts. Well, that's okay. It's already unparked. Uh, warm the camera when the sequence ends. Yes. And then park the mount. Yes. Okay. Hit go. And now it's going. So let's take a look at what's going on right now. Over here, down at the bottom, we can see the telescope is slewing. And if I look at the uh, uh, video picture of that from the CPWI, the Celestron um, PWI software that is controlling the telescope, you see it's homing in on the target right over here, which is, in this case, I hope it's above the tree line. So let's see, we'll, we'll find out in a second. Well, a few seconds anyway. All right, the uh, telescope is setting, settling right here, you can see. And uh, we're going to get a picture coming up starting uh, shortly. Um, it's starting to do the plate solving right now. It was on the Crab Nebula, which is on the other side of the sky. Now it's resettling. Now it's going to take a 10 second uh, exposure. There we go, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's see how we did. There it is over there. It came close already on the first try. Not bad. Uh, and also, it looks like it has cleared the roof of the house and the trees. So that's good. So what it's going to do? It's going to um, solve this and then reposition it to center the whirlpool nebula. And it is solving, getting ready to move the camera. I mean, the uh, tel well, the camera is on the telescope. Move the telescope. Telescope not inside tolerance. Seeking, sinking telescope. Okay. All right. It's slewing now the telescope. Hopefully the uh, galaxy will be right about here when we're finished. It should be. Settling. I give the amount 10 seconds to settle. And now we're taking the picture. 10 second exposure. See how well we do here. Bam, right in the middle. Isn't that nice? Okay, the next thing this is going to do is to start the guider. I don't know what it, it's solving for something. It's dead center. Okay, it's starting the guiding. There it is. So this is going to disappear in a second, and then the autofocus is going to start. There we go. We're guiding. I can look at my guider, and I got we got some clouds up in the sky. So I only got four stars to pick from at the moment. So it, instead of having like a half a dozen or a dozen stars, uh, it's only got four at the moment. But it, it works. It's it's guiding pretty well right now. All right, we're going into the autofocus routine. See, all this is automatic. I, I would not have to be here um, to do this. 
I can, this can be done while you're away or sleeping or eating or, or, or whatever. Now we're getting our first uh, points. This is going to take a little bit, so I'm going to speed this up through the process um, while it's uh, doing it so you'll see it in, in not real time but in fast time. All right, now you can see that it, has, it, it, it produced a curve of points, and it looks like it's going to be right about here, the focus point that it's going to use on the focuser. Let's see, taking a few more samples. See, now it's taking the other side. It, it, what it's seeing, you can see a generally a parabolic curve right here. The sky is not perfectly clear right now, so that's one of the reasons why I'm getting these little bumps in the curve itself. All right, it found it, and it's going to use the uh, HFR at 2.93, which for this uh, system is not too bad. And it's doing the last test exposure. And it looks pretty focused to me. I can zoom in on this. Take a quick look. You look at that. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's the upper left-hand corner. That's the top center. They're, they're pretty clean. Look at that. So that was done all automatically. There's the galaxy. That was only a 10-second exposure now, to keep that in mind. All right. There we go. And coming back out, now we're counting down. We're at uh, 33 seconds of the uh, 180 second exposure for the first exposure of the Whirlpool Galaxy. All right, coming up. See what we get. Ah, not bad, huh? What do you think? There's one picture three-minute exposure of the Whirlpool Galaxy. And there you have it. Once the imaging session is over and I get up, I just uh, download the files from the mini computer to my main desktop computer, and then I go into post-processing from there. But uh, with this new setup, it is so much easier to get not just one target, but multi-targets in just one night. And again, there are so many targets to choose from throughout the month of April going into the month of May. As a matter of fact, summer is gonna be another active month too with all, a lot of the nebula or nebulae uh, over in the uh, uh, Milky Way galaxy. You got M8, uh, the Lagoon Nebula, uh, you got, uh, what do you got, uh, M20, the uh, Trifid Nebula, some say Trifid Nebula. Uh, and you got the uh, M27, I mean M17, M16, the Pillars of Creation in M17, and just tons of stuff to come along to photograph throughout the nighttime hours. And I'm able to do this while it's at the best clearance. If my location, that's going to be around 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, but the computer is all set in automatic mode. Wonderful! Isn't it becoming amazing what we can do? Just think what Galileo or Kepler or Newton would have done if they had this same equipment back in their days. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy. And remember, unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone.